Okay, are we live? I believe we are. All right. Yep, microphone's hot. Oh, look, it's Matt. It's Susie. Hi, welcome to Susie. Suzella at Susie Health Solutions in Washington, in Wenatchee, Washington. Okay. So it's Thursday, which means it's Suzella Day, which means we're going to talk about whatever the heck we want to. It usually has to do with, I don't know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, well, today we're, we're kind of talking about something that, that, that struck us as odd because it came across my feed. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an old Simon Sinek video from 2019. Um, it was... A, it, was titled uh I can't remember it was it was titled but it was if, if you're a millennial watch this yeah it was the big big flash on it, it. came back around because um what it was about was the challenges millennials are seeing and the challenges that the primarily the uh baby boomers are having with them <laughs> yeah and it's it's kind of what they, they've been set up with yeah um, um they were kind of set up not to fail necessarily, but kind of a joyless lifestyle. Uh, potentially, yes. Um, you you talk for a second. I'm gonna go grab some notes. I'll be right back. Yeah, Susie actually got some notes on it. It was it was really interesting. It was it, it had to deal with the kind of the the swipe right lifestyle of everything being an instant gratification and this this quick dopamine rush. Um, and we've, we've seen it kind of for a while in our business because one of the first questions we ask a lot of folks is, what's your budget? Well, that's usually the second question. First was, how do you use your insurance? Yeah. Okay. So we talked about, he talked about, uh, let's see. The, the question is, it's an imbalance. Mm -hmm. And the, the older generations are looking at the millennials as if they're entitled. They have yeah. entitlement issues. Um, and that comes from, according to him, from their parents, the way they were raised, from technology, from general impatience, and from the environment. Which is, yeah, I want to kind of riff on that a little bit because the, the whole entitlement issue yeah. is, is kind of the, the, the speed that you're able to get stuff. I guess, yeah. Because if you look at it like that, that acquisition mm -hmm. time frame... If you if you look right now, mm -hmm. right at this moment, the ultra wealthy have the ability to get things instantly. Yeah, and they generally have entitlement issues. Mm -hmm. Ask anybody how, who has to deal with somebody who is ultra wealthy and has to ask them to wait. Yeah, that doesn't work very well, um, and that's a that's a stereotype. It, it, Not everybody's like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just. It's it's, it's one of those deal. things that's out there. If you if you if you do service, you start to see really quickly mm -hmm. that it's it's that speed of needing to acquire something. Well, you roll into the drive thru and you need it right now. Right now. Well, what I'm seeing though is people who are really rude about it uh -huh. are not the millennials. Not usually. Mm -mm. No, and so that's that's a disconnect there. Um, we are seeing that they. The millennials are trying, they're looking for um, a purpose. Mm, they are. That's be. one of the things he said, that they're looking for fulfillment. They're looking to make an impact, but they don't have a focus to create that impact. Well, we work with quite a few um, uh -huh. in, our, in our business, and, and a lot of it, when we deal with it, is, is uh, the majority it's like oh i didn't know it worked this way um that's true it's 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 training it's it's that it's that acquisition of knowledge mm -hmm. to to move you through life exactly and that's um it, it's the the joy of the journey it's not mm -hmm. the destination it's the journey and that's a very old school concept i mean that's like beck the buddha level well yeah i i kind of equated it to um the difference between you know grilling Mm -hmm. versus barbecue yes grilling is a little quicker barbecuing is that that three-day low and slow and it, it you can you can turn something horrible mm -hmm. or you know not 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 expensive into something wonderful exactly and what you're running into is the the millennials according to, to mm -hmm. simon you know six years ago um 
It's 2019. 19, 20, three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, again, he was. they were looking to, when they get into the job market, they're looking to make an impact. Mm-hmm. But they want to make the impact now. Yeah. They don't know how to build to the impact, to create the impact. And that's something that we here at CCL Solutions are helping a lot of our, a lot of people do if they want us to help, mm-hmm. we'll help them. I mean, we have to learn how to do it because they weren't taught um, early on because of a lot of different things. And it wasn't necessarily their fault. It's just, it was a weird parent, some sort of a, a slightly, I mean, he was saying it's sort of a parenting fail, which I don't know if it fails the right way. I don't there. know if it's parenting also. No, it, it, no some parenting is one of the things he yeah. said specifically. Yeah, but if it, we're looking at what he actually said yeah. about, that's one of the things he said. And it was um, a parenting strategy that was not as effective. It was the everyone's um, everyone's special, and when and when everyone's special, no one's special. The participant ribbon, that old trope. Yeah, but that's that's. But I, I don't I, know how lit that how how that's. Yeah, because we're a little bit older. Our our kids a little bit older. Mm-hmm. And it was it was one of those things that we 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 worked with because we did you know our son didn't necessarily always get a ribbon mm-hmm. you know he had to work uh, a good example is martial arts mm-hmm. he had to work for his stripes it it was work it was a journey and that's I had and, to point it and out you to had him. the chance to, and you had the mm-hmm. opportunity to fail some fo- some mm-hmm. stereotypes again back to stereotypes yeah you can't fail everyone everyone wins everyone passes the class mm-hmm. whether or not they earned it i don't know how true that actually is i've never seen any actual studies about it it seems to be more like a um broad brush stereotype yeah because we never really saw it and but and, we're, and but we're also older parents and the other thing is about that is someone felt special about giving a ribbon to every kid yeah, and no one addresses that yeah, one. Yeah, there is that too. Now you got to remember, Nick is not necessarily a millennial. Mm-hmm. He's a little. He's a Gen Y. He's a Gen Y. Yeah. Um, or they call him Gen Zs. I can't remember if they're Y or Zs. I don't know. He's after. He's the next batch after. He's a little young for a millennial. Um, yeah. It's... And we're officially Gen X, so we're in a weird. Yeah, we, we, we sort of skip the generation. Yeah, but we kind of hang out with the younger generation. Yeah, sometimes. Um, one of the things that Matt start, uh, triggered, um, started on officially when I was out getting my notes mm-hmm. was the whole, what causes this lack of this, this desire for instant gratification and mm-hmm. we got to do it now. I just got my job. I'm not making an impact. I think I'm going to have to quit after six months. Yeah. And that is the, the tech, the technical factor. And that is the dopamine kicks. You get yeah. likes and um the peer approval and the swipe white swipe right and everything's like bam 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 and and that dopamine thing that's the same feeling you get when you get drunk it's the same feeling you get when you smoke a cigarette it's the same feeling you get when mm-hmm. you win gambling it's an addictive feeling you're not addicted to these things you're addicted to the dopamine is the theory yeah the the the, the bump mm-hmm. um and you're i'm always chasing that i think it's more than technology probably and the the reason why i think it's more than technology is because in our generation we really saw kind of the 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 move to like drive-throughs and motels where you drove up and boom that room was available for you we started really in in our generation of gen gen Mm -hmm. x with this concept of hey let's move you know at a really fast pace. The city's really fast and at bright lights and this this rush of energy. Go, 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 go. Send things available 24-7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, 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 yeah, you can go golfing in, in Vegas and midnight. Mm-hmm. But you can. Yeah. Um, but one thing is true. And so this is something that was leading up. And then mm-hmm. when you're dealing with the, hey, did I get enough likes on my Instagram dopamine kick? You've got the instant gratification clicking into that the the dopamine kick, which is even faster, mm-hmm. and it's creating, according to Simon, yeah, shallow relationships. You're not giving yourself the chance to build the deep relationships. Yeah, it's all really surface. And and one of the, the one of the um, examples he used was don't allow cell phones in a boardroom if you're waiting for a meeting to start. 
because when you're doing that, everyone's just sitting there, you know, playing on their phones mm -hmm. or, you know, binking around. Whereas if everyone's just kind of sitting around waiting, you're sitting around waiting with your peers for the meeting to start and you talk to the guy next to you. Hey, how's your mom? You yeah. Know, that kind of stuff. And those were that, those little innocuous conversations build deeper relationships. Oh, yeah. And that's part of the journey that is missing. That the, these, these, this population is not been taught to process. Well, I, I think because we, we, like I said, we saw this in our peer group mm -hmm. with the cell phones. And, and, yes. And, but we started without them. We started with and we started with playing on the the playing on the playground mm -hmm. and having to actually interact with each other mm -hmm. up until most of us in the you know college age and, and after. That's when a lot of us in our age group mm -hmm. started getting uh, cell phones and we didn't even have the internet until we were in our of any kind until we were in our twenties. Mm. Uh, and yeah. AOL was in our in our twenties, babe. And CompuServe, when you could buy a... Yeah, actually, we had bulletin boards in our teens. I, I didn't. Was, I was a geek, though. Um, it, okay. So, but it But was, even so. Yeah, even but so. But even a bulletin would, board, it's still innocuous conversation. Yeah, it's it's still it's still conversation. It was still... It was always, you know, because we had, like, one modem that was slow and... And horrible it was you know two or three of us you know mm -hmm. huddled around at, at tsr or, yeah. or atari or whatever mm -hmm. um you know even back in the you know 90s you had the the, the land parties where you'd slave mm -hmm. systems together to, mm -hmm. to video game yeah exactly so it was still kind of a, a communal but there was still some community going on there yeah and and it's that weird community interaction now i, I kind of disagree with some of the cell phone stuff he mentioned mm -hmm. you know the the whole you know put your face cell phone face down is, is still bad mm -hmm. um even having it in the room was bad according to yeah him. because i was you know you know i'm i'm one of those old guys it's like yeah i had a you know i had an actual telephone on each wall i didn't salivate each, each time it rang it's little bell um, when I was growing up. Uh -huh. So it's like, yeah, I can flip it over and uh, make sure the ringer's off and boom, I think nothing of it. But you're not that. You're not the next generation. Could be. Uh -huh. But I'm not, I'm not going to throw all the, the gen next generation on the bus. No, not everybody does that. Yeah. And then it, it, it everyone has different levels of this. I mean, it, it's, it's all a big... I think what we what we're focusing on is how do we acknowledge that these these people who are coming into the workforce are not entitled; they're under trained. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna rip the the these people out. Okay, good. And the reason I'm gonna rip it out is because it's the real a real big difference, and mm -hmm. it's it's a cultural difference. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between someone wanting to rolling in and wanting to earn, you know, you know, getting a paycheck for 50 grand. Mm -hmm. At entry level. At, at, no, just rolling into an office expecting 50 grand mm -hmm. versus an entrepreneur building a business. Okay. See, that's one thing that Simon was talking about. He was on a industry mm -hmm. concept he was like you're working for somebody else he wasn't even touching on the entrepreneur because that that instant gratification dopamine junkie mm -hmm. would be very challenged to think long-term build yes they need that instant cash to grill themselves in that society of mm -hmm. dopamine mm -hmm. versus the the painful struggle of building something Yes, and that could be why multi-level marketing has exploded. Because that is, there's a lot of promises to, mm -hmm. to fast money. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't necessarily pan out. Yeah. You, <laughs> but it's the, it's the promise of fast it's, money. It's, it's the flash. Yeah. Boom. Hey, we, you, you, you can make unlimited income. Yes. And that's, but everyone's, that's been a, 
a hook for decades, though. Yeah, Amway was what started in the '60s. Oh, even before that, I'm sure. Uh, Tupperware, which is one of the first ones, Mary Kay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I won't rag on multi levels in, in those as long as they teach you a skill. Exactly, and that's where your older multi levels actually did teach you a skill. Mm-hmm. Your Avons, your Tupperwares, your Mary Kays, your Amways, they actually taught you how to sell. Your newer ones, your Rodan and Fields, your uh, here's here's the key. Uh-huh. Anytime you're selling product, Lula Row. If it's not teaching you inventory, you're not you're you're in a you're not in a, you're in, that's a red flag. That's a red flag exactly. because they're cramming inventory at you. Usually. What they're doing is they're saying here, buy all this stuff and sell it, and you'll make money. Mm-hmm. Who's making money? The guy who sold you the stuff. The guy who sold you the yeah. stuff. The so in our to... in our state is also the B and O tax because you're holding inventory. Yes. And, and if they if they don't teach you about B and O tax, you're building a tax liability. Yeah, and you don't even realize until you until you know they come along and hit you with the tax burden you didn't realize mm-hmm. you had. Um, so Simon was talking about how corporate America can help build. Um, build these up, create some leadership Mm -hmm. and help, you know, give them a chance to create situations where those innocuous conversations can happen. Um, And that can happen not just in a corporate situation, but in a real life situation too. It's not a bad thing to, you know, just hang out and talk to people. Karaoke is a great Example, karaoke is a very big gathering air, zone for a lot yeah. of folks, especially in our area. People get together and they karaoke. And when you're doing that, there's enough ambient noise and you want to listen mm-hmm. to the listen to the um, singer mm-hmm. and you want to kind of just, con- hey, what do you want to sing? And you have little conversations and you're not necessarily glued to your cell phone. Yeah. So that's a good example of the innocuous conversation where you're creating a structure. You're creating a network of people. Well, it's like the leagues, like the old bowling leagues and softball leagues. Yeah, and those still the exist. sport leagues. Yeah, but you're not seeing you're not seeing that dynamic in promoted younger, very much. No, and you're not seeing them in the younger folks that much. Yeah. It's, it's Sometimes there. you get resurgence, like the dodgeball leagues. Yes, is a good yeah, example. That's a good example. And softball is perpetual. I think that's mm-hmm. always good. there's always going to be a sense of softball. League. But that's a good example of of doing something long term mm-hmm. that's community building. Mm-hmm. And you build relationships with that are long term. Right. right. And one of the things that he, another thing you talked about was how when you just sort of waft through life, and that mm-hmm. was his phrase, you're not you're gonna have a hard time finding joy or fulfillment. Yeah. And that's sad. Yeah, it's one of the reasons we, I made my son watch the video. I, I do horrible things like homework like that. He's evil. Um, Our kid's 15. It's evil. For yeah, as, far, I, as far as he's concerned, that was evil. Yeah, it, it's, uh-huh. it's evil, but it, it makes him think mm-hmm. uh, because I want our kid to find, you know, find a joy-filled life. Yeah. And we've always kind of, we've always encouraged him to work the process and, you know, find the, you know, take mm-hmm. the steps to the goal. Um, and yeah, he uses his electronics mm-hmm. is techni- to deck quite a bit but i don't I, I mean he also cultivates real relationships with human beings yes um it's it's one of those it's one of those things he's he's, he's got you know a small peer group that mm-hmm. he's been working mm-hmm. and he's concerned about them and they're concerned about him mm-hmm. and, and well, that's what you need in your life yeah people who care about you you know, and vice versa, and vice versa. Um, and, and I would like to see him, you know, because of who I am and, and how I interact, I would like him to continue to build multiple meaningful relationships like that throughout his life. Yeah, and that's not, um, and that's something that I know I personally had have struggled mm-hmm. with. Um, of course, I would also be probably pretty content just living on my own without a whole lot of additional quote yes and you've got so much you can contribute which is just insane to think that you'd be by yourself with your cats (laughs) see that's because i didn't believe i had stuff to contribute for a really long time yeah and i do i know that i do now you know it took Mm. some work but i had to figure it out and it's all good i mean Mm -hmm. it just takes practice you know 
Well, yeah, that's like why I threw you down to soup live. Yes, that was a lot of fun. You know, you've got a lot to contribute. I mean, uh, you know, you've got like the family recipes. Ta da! Not all of them. You got some of them. Yeah, I know how to. No, it's not that I have the recipes. I know how to use the, the recipes. recipes. I can make kolache. I can make, you know, you know, I, I can make um, knedeliki. I can mm -hmm. make lefse. I know I can make bread. I can make this. I can make that. I know how to use mm -hmm. the recipes. Other, my nieces have the recipes, but I don't, I know Taylor's actually cooking. Mm -hmm. She's working that angle. I don't know about the other girls. Um, and I'm hoping that they're continuing to, to, to pursue and mm -hmm. move forward and learn how to do that. And that's again, part of the journey mm -hmm. and you're contributing because you are bringing your knowledge and your excitement about something to other people. Well, yeah, it was interesting, particularly the Kalachi. Because uh -huh. Mike C. flew from the East Coast to Texas and he discovered his first kolache. Yes. And actually, I had a club Nikki, but that's also as well. So. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I had to point out, I was like, yeah, they're in Texas and they're also in North Dakota. And, and you can find them spread out through, you know, wherever the Bohemians went. Yes, we are. And I mentioned on that particular, mm -hmm. he made a post on Facebook. I was like, yeah. He said, does anyone ever have these? Yeah, I make them every year at Christmas time. <laughs> And that is, you know, you know, that, that, you know, discovery of, Hey, this is something new and wonderful. Yeah. And I remember when I introduced Matt to Kalachis, it's like, wow, do this more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As I do this more and, and probably the biggest spin I, I, I ever contributed was, uh, was the addition of the Huckleberry Kalachi. That was pretty damn awesome. Um, Matt's grandmother, Matt's mother, grandmother. It was grandmother. Grandma made the first batch of huckleberry jam, and then your mom made a couple more batches after that. She also had a tayberry that was delicious. Yeah, the tayberry. Yeah. yeah, and we used that. We did huckleberry in the kolaches one year. It's like, oh man, that's delicious stuff. And and that is truly, you know, an American invention. It was the huckleberry part. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because huckleberries are founded, you know, about I think it's three thousand. They're or strictly American and. You know, whenever we we start to occasionally you see you know stuff in the stores that are that are you know cut down. Usually, it's with pear and a couple of, or and blue, apple and blueberry. And blueberry. Well, if you, you might have some black, some huckleberry in mm. it, but generally, blueberries are similar enough that you've got some huckleberry, but a lot of blueberry. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing. I mean, it's fine. Just know what you're looking at. Yeah. And if you want a genuine pure huckleberry jam, you gotta make it yourself. Yeah, you, you gotta spend the time, hike up the mountain, pick the berries. Yeah. And it's not that hard to do. It's not that hard to do, but it takes it takes time. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. Yeah. Um and they're delicious. And they make great pancakes. And, and that is is kind of the difference. And if you can get four cups of huckleberries, you can make a huckleberry pie. Yeah, it takes four cups. That's that's average for most berry pies. Mm -hmm. Actually, most pies about four cups for a nine or ten inch pie. Yeah, and, see, and, there's a bit of knowledge I've imparted to you. That yeah, I have and like baked us. usually yeah. around June, June, July ish, you start seeing the huckleberries come off. Yep. So you'll you'll see them come off usually in burn sections because mm -hmm. they got need the need sun. Mm -hmm. um, you need a decent snowfall, which we had this year. This could be a good huckleberry year. This could be a great huckleberry year. You might have to go pick them. Um, and just watch out for bears. Yes, because the bears like the huckleberries more than you do. And they will fight you for them. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things they use. And it's late enough in the summer that they're really, really starting to worry about. They're starting to really try to pack it on yeah. for hibernation. So, yeah, they are devouring everything that their little hands on, including you. Because mm -hmm. you're delicious. You're delicious. A little you're, high cholesterol, but you're delicious. Yeah, but you're, all, you're most most of us are well marbled. It's true. You know, they say they say your brain is the highest in your cholesterol cholesterol level. Okay, so yeah, it's That's why zombies have heart issues. It's you you <laughs> you you got to take the you know look at the low and slow. Look at you know you know he mentioned having you know weekends off of technology and getting away from mm -hmm. that 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 big dopamine fix. And one of the things he didn't address mm -hmm. that are. Uh, that are that was um, was uh, gaming, video games, 
yeah. video games. Yeah, there's there's definitely, especially when you're in network va- mm-hmm. video gaming, when you've got other people on with you. Yeah, sure. I imagine you're getting some uh, some surface interactions of those little, hey, I killed that guy. Congratulations. Yeah, and there, there's some surface, but it's there's there's also kind of a really dark community. Morning, Chris Wilson. Um, and and it was one of the things that my son talked about. You know, the was his, you know, the 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 dark chats. Uh huh. Because you don't want to, you know, throw a headset at an eight-year-old and, and, and have them listen to some of these chat rooms during video games. No, probably not. It's probably some weird stuff going on. You probably don't want your 15-year-old listening to some of that Correct. stuff. Correct. You've got to have some, some maturity, but it's that, you know, it's not all community is good community. No, there are some definitely some not-so-nice sit up Um, there. We didn't really find... I, I, I don't know if he's found any in the Steam community that, that people he game with on a regular basis. Possibly. I wouldn't be surprised if he's run across some stuff that made him go, how screwed Oh, I know he has. Just, just, just some of his responses. Um, but that's kind of, you know, whether or not you can build a community with I think the instant gratification of, of video games. I think it's too peripheral. I think it's too, too surface. Because you're not really dealing with, uh, hey, how's your mother questions. It's like, it, it, it's, it's, it's all trash talk. It's all trash talk. And trash talk is, is surface. It really is. I mean, yes, you can have friends that you trash talk with, but as long as you're making sure they know you're, you're tech, touching base with them on real things, that's when you build mm-hmm. a community. It doesn't have to be super duper deep stuff. So we're getting to the tail end. So yeah. let's, let's, let's kind of look at how could we better, um, slow down our lives. Mm-hmm. To so that we can you know work on relationships, mm-hmm. and you know discover joy. Oh. Well, I mean, don't be glued to your to your devices all the time. You know, one of the things I've learned recently is I put my electronics down and I work on. I'm working on a, 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 a fabric project. I've got a. I'm actually doing some rug hooking. <laughs> And that gets me, I'm, yeah, I've got the TV on, but I'm paying attention to what I'm watching on TV. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing something that's... You're engaging little, some I'm skill. I'm engaging a skill, and it's a little, I find that to be relaxing and a little more stimulating. I've, I've seen that. I've, I've come out, uh, one of our other friends uh, was able to custom make one. Oh, cool. So it was, it was interesting watching Jill... You know, she, she just had her completed one. It's like, yeah, I took this picture and made this latch hook rug. It's like I could do that, and it's like, okay, that was that was fascinating. Well, how does she get the yarn though? I have to. I, mean, I, I don't know. Cause she said it was a lot of yarn work. It is because you have to cut the yarn. Yeah, and the particular little tiny pieces. Yeah, so. I'm gonna have to, have to touch. I have to, I have to connect with her. Yeah. So that that was. But that, that's that's one of the things I've been doing mm-hmm. because I got to the point where it's like I am not paying attention to anything around me but what's on what's right in front of me so mm-hmm. i need to spread my brain spread my brain out a little bit yeah so uh, do that spread your brain out a little bit yeah and and i think that in the in the in the, in the you know as we emerge from COVID, mm-hmm. come out of our co- come out of our cocoons come out of our cocoons i i think that, that it's gonna be we're gonna see some some popularity and some and some you know, older type gatherings. Bowling. Um, bowling. Well, Eastmont Lanes is doing their 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 big event coming up real good, and that's got some great traction. Yeah, I, um, but that's a good example. Karaoke. Um, I also think you know one of the things that we did and we haven't done it in years mm-hmm. was uh, group camping. Yeah, you, we might see that. We might see that. I I, I want to say you're you're going to see because I know a couple of our festival goers. Mm-hmm. Um, they went to Renfest and and they knew vendors that sold everything. Oh yeah, there's some hardcore sellouts going on. Um, so I, I think some of those ac- outdoor activities we're going to see more. Of a yeah, resurgence. outdoor sociable activities. Yeah, yeah we'll see. A, we'll see. We'll see a push on that. Um, fest- and- well, the Apple Blossom and uh, other. Uh, 
community festivals mm-hmm. will probably have some some up, upset upsurge. I have a feeling that uh, next month's Pride event will be a success. Yeah, and what, and yeah, I think that's going to be bigger, and I think it's going to be because well, the, one of the things we saw in 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 the, particularly this apple blossom we haven't seen in a long time in Wenatchee hmm. was violence. Yeah, that's true. I think what we, we a that could be a larger population. B, people are letting loose where they haven't in a long time. And we're seeing some really interesting. So that's that's one of the. We do have to be careful about that. Yeah. And and violence is usually, you know, from my experiences, has been. Usually it's emotionally fueled. Well, yeah. Anger is emotionally fueled. All of it's everything's emotionally fueled when you go back to Uh, it. And what I mean by emotionally fuel Mm -hmm. is. It's uncontrollable, ah, okay. emotionally fueled. So some emotional. They don't know how to handle. It. They get jealous. Uh, we we saw uh, it looked like a, a mental health. It uh, looked like a mental health crisis. Crisis and, 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 and very 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 badly. And, and and that was you know some of it was you know de you know some de escalation that could have yeah occurred. that that we yeah. Um, we don't know the whole story yet. We don't know the whole story, but that's, that's but kind I, of, as, as an observer, that's what it looked and like. And a mental health de-escalation would probably have saved some lives. And, but it's it's that, you know, the ability to get in and do some of these social interactions. Mm-hmm. And it's not, and we're, we're still going to, we're still going to see, because, I mean, we had a couple shootings this last week that really hit the news on the disconnect with community or you were attacking someone else's community. Yeah. And that's one of the problems we're running into is attacking other people's communities. My community is better than your community, so I'm going to kill your community. <laughs> yeah, and that's really that that tribalism level is really... It's dis- it's, it's, it's I don't it's, like it. <laughs> it's really primal. It's very violent. And it's very ugly. And, and it really shows the lack of ability to celebrate in your own community. Mm-hmm. And welcome other people into your community, or vice versa. You can you can overlap communities. It's okay. Yes. Okay, that's a good note to end on. It's a great note to end on. So hey, have a great week. We yes. will talk next Thursday. Yes, and Matt will have had his birthday between now and then. So wish him a happy birthday, and let him know that I got him a great birthday present. So yeah, low and slow, guys. Just low take it slow. low and slow. Bye. Bye.